Hi, I'm Tom Nanamaker with the Armour Corporation. Um, today we're going to talk about the pattern day trader rule and how to avoid it if you're trading option spreads. Now the pattern day trader rule will affect you if you're trading equity options and index options on equities like SPX. Uh, if your account balance is below $25,000 and if you open and close the same um, spreads in the same day, that'll count as one pattern day trader or PDT event. Again, you only get three of those every five uh, trading days, which is every week. Um, if you violate this at think or swim, um, they'll let you um, uh, reset that once, and that's it. Basically, you have an oopsie, and they'll, they'll let you redo it, but that's it. No more chances. Uh, interactive brokers, if you do um, goof it up, they'll uh, let you but they'll put you in the penalty box for 95 days and then then you're okay to trade that now there are ways around that if you want to trade uh, futures options like futures options on the es uh, futures there is no pattern day trader rule for futures or currencies it's only equities but let's uh we, we like to trade spx because it has expirations every day so if we want to trade spx but we don't want to deal with the pdt rule what do we do? There's something called a PDT hack out there. It's really just a box. It's been around a long time. Market makers have done this for years. But let's take a look at it. So let's just buy a vertical. Doesn't matter if you buy or sell. So here's a typical vertical and we'll analyze. Look at the risk profile. Here it is. And remember for a vertical, you're going from plus to minus. So this would be going from plus 35 minus 30. So you're going down. So this would be plus, that would be minus. So the market wants to go um, from plus to minus and it's, it's heading lower. And you can see that on the risk graph, that's a bearish spread. Uh, so now say it comes time to close it. If we just analyze the opposite trade like this and we look at the risk profile, now it's zero. So if we unhide that, that's the original trade. And I'll say we can close this for a little bit better credit, maybe something up here. Now that'll lock in a $90 profit. And you can see it doesn't matter how far up or down you go. Uh, what you've basically done is you are, um, you're closing it, right? So you've got the 38.35 that you're long, 38.30 that you're short. And now on the closing trade, that 38.35 you're long, now you're short. And the 38.30 that you were short, now you're long. Well, this also works with calls. So if you do it with calls, you have to change it like this and then unlock it and now it's going to be a debit so what would be the price that you would break even at let's see let's figure it out right here so 310 plus 190 is what five dollars so you have a five dollar white spread here so if your two debits add up to five dollars you've broken even if you can close this for less than three dollars or 310 you'll, you'll lock in a profit if the debit you pay is more, now you're locking in a loss. Um, however, if you notice, you were you opened a position with puts, but you close it with calls. Um, so let's take a look at that also. That was with the debit spread. Let's take a look at it with a credit spread. So say you're going to sell something like a, uh, oh, like a 20 delta. We'll sell that spread. And we can even make it 10 wide. Let's see, 90, right? And so that's trading for $1.60. Looks like this. Bullish spread. Pretty good odds. 20 delta. So you have roughly an 80% chance it'll expire um, worthless. Now there's probably touch is different, of course. And you have expected moves to take into account. So right now the expected move is 40. Apparently here's the market. So that's roughly the expected move somewhere around here. So that looks like a pretty decent trade. You have decent theta, 93, fairly low delta. So that looks like a good trade. Um, we're, we're recording this on New Year's Day, and the market's closed tomorrow on Monday, observing the, the holiday because today's a Sunday. And then the first this will be the first trading day Tuesday. So again, let's let's close this out. We'll analyze the opposite trade. So if we just do the same with puts, here's our $1.60 credit and debit they offset each other good to go um, so basically what you do is just change puts to calls and calls to puts so here we changed our put spread into calls now unclick that and you notice the 840 plus 160 adds up to your spread with 10 so if you're getting a bigger credit than ten dollars 
Now you're locking in a $10 box. So at expiration, this is all going to expire worthless. So here you've got a bullish spread and a bear spread and they offset each other. So if you can get say $9, you just locked in a 60 to the profit, a $60 profit. Um, and if it's less, so we do $8, we lock in a $40 loss. Um, but again, the easy way to do this is when you have a position like this, analyze the opposite trade, or you can either do great do opposite order or analyze opposite trade. If we do opposite order, it's going to look like this. All you do is change puts to calls and unclick this and then figure out what credit you want. So again, it depends on what um, what credit you got. So we got a dollar sixty credit, and so you take your spread with minus that one sixty, and that's um, your break even credit, right? So again, if you want the credits to be more than ten dollars, then you'll have a profit. So if you look at that trade, oops, where is the trade? Here it is. So eight forty plus the one sixty that gives us a zero. Um, and we just got to pay for commissions, really. Um, but if the commission or the credit is higher, say we can get 950, something like that, you know, somewhere up here. Then if we analyze this, we close the orders. Now we've locked in a $75 profit. So again, all you do is just change whatever you have, puts or calls, change it to the other one, uncheck the uh, lock, and get figure out what price you want to actually close it at. Um, for instance, if I'm selling a spread and it's trading for, say, 50 cents when I open it, if I analyze the opposite trade, remember I want to go from puts to calls or calls to puts, unlock this, and it's a 10 wide spread, so 10 minus 50 is 950. That's going to be my break even price, and you see that here. So we want a total credit more than $10. This adds up to 10. So if we can get, uh, now the most you can get for this is $10, right? So if we can get $9.90, then we'll lock in a $40 profit on a $50 credit. So pretty good. Um, if you do uh, let it expire, then you don't have to pay the closing commission. So that saves a little bit. Um, but then the next thing you might ask, does this work with butterflies or condors? And as a matter of fact, it does. So let's do a butterfly. Let's just do an at the money butterfly. We'll buy one. It doesn't matter what your width is here. So here's our fly. And now to close it, what do we do? We right click, analyze, or create opposite order or opposite trade here. That flattens it out, change the puts to calls, and make this float, right? Now we paid a 20 cent debit, so we want to get a 20 cent credit to have um, zero profit, right? So here's the zero line. Um, so the butterflies work a little bit differently than the vertical spreads. Um, you know, the uh, the width is it's harder to calculate the uh, the credit you need. Just look at the debit or credit that you received when you do the fly. So we paid, say we pay 50 cents or 50, say 50 cents for this butterfly, but we close it with a 20 cent credit, we're gonna lock in a $30 loss. So you wanna close it for a higher credit than the debit you paid for it. So if we do this, then we'll make a $85 profit. And again, we change the puts to call. So what that you'll see on here is you'll see uh, plus one minus two plus one. And then the same thing over here, um, but it'll be the opposite. So whatever strike you're short on the puts, you're gonna be long on the calls and vice versa. And you can see that here, the, the 3845 is long, the put, but the 3845 call is short. Now, if you look at it, these are um, um, the, 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 the calls and the, the puts. It doesn't really matter which one you're doing. So if we do, here's the long butterfly and here's the short butterfly. But we could easily make this a long butterfly. And it looks identical to this one, right? That's just twice as many contracts. So we could open it with a call and close it with a put. Same thing, right? Um, just make sure that the prices are right. So, and that's due to uh, slippage and everything. So, just say these are both trading for uh, 20 cents, something like that. There's your zero line. And it works the same with iron condors. But um, again, all you do is just change puts to calls or calls to puts, un 
um, unlock the price and then figure out, you know, for a butterfly, if you paid a debit for it, like here we paid 20 cents, the credit you receive needs to be more than that to make a profit. And then uh, for the box trade for a vertical, we'll go over that one more time for you. We'll just, uh, we'll buy a vertical. We'll buy it this time. Here's, here's what it looks like. It's a bearish vertical. So to close it, we're going to analyze opposite trade, change puts to calls, and unfloat or unlock the uh, the price. So now this is a five wide vertical. So 315 plus 190 is what? That's uh, 405. So that's a $5 spread. So that's, we're paying five cents more than this than the box is worth at expiration. So if we can buy this back, this other part for less than the total five minus 190 or 310, then that locks in our profit. Now I have to pay commissions, of course. And then uh, for cash settled instruments like SPX, these all settle the cash at the end of the day. There's no risk, no margin that you're using. And it just, uh, it just locks in this profit. And then for Thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade, it'll settle in the middle of the night, or and you'll see it on your broker statement, where uh, they'll do all the calculations to figure out which ones were in the money, if they had value, that'll add them all up, and then um, but it'll all net out to a plus forty. So if you look at your broker statement at the close, it won't quite be right if you have opening trades or a box like this until it settles overnight. So don't worry about it if it's not right exactly until the settlement uh, but it will settle the cash um, but you have to be careful if you're doing stocks because you do have assignment risk and you don't want to be assigned stock so i wouldn't box things off with a stock with indexes that settle cash it's fine and you can also box off futures options you can box off options on uh, currencies because they all settle the cash right so um well es does obviously you don't want to no risk getting settled with a uh, hundred thousand pounds of beef if you're trading cattle futures. Um, so stick to things to settle the cash, and you won't have to worry about it. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and remember, the PDT hack is really just a box. It's been around for years, and that's more the standard term for um, synthetically closing a trade. So that's it for now. Thanks.